This will tell you about a downtown spa in Bowling Green that serves food and drinks, find out how one local woman turned tragedy into opportunity for others, and a sample of the sounds of America's finest singing machine. Falcon 5 News is next. Live from the campus of Bowling Green State University, this is Falcon 5 News. Hello and welcome to Falcon 5 News. I'm McKenna Rodriguez. If you're walking around campus, you might see the Office of Sustainability is helping maintain a green campus. Some buildings have an automatic sink to help conserve water and hand dryers to reduce waste. A new feature in buildings is the water bottle refill stations. These give students for the option to reuse water bottles. Other efforts made are labeled landfills and recycling bins, or even the signage posted around dining halls, the union, and residence halls. Over the next couple of months, BGSU will participate in an international competition called Recycle Mania. The program helps get students involved by reducing waste and keeping trash and recyclables separate. overlooked a lot because unless you get people to change the way they approach life, the way they live their life, the way they consume um, objects and um, materials, um, you're not going to make that large of an impact. So an event like Recycle Mania really allows a large university like Bowling Green to really get involved with waste, with, uh, waste reduction and it, it does make an impact. It absolutely does. If BGSU comes out on top, it will be nationally recognized and given an award made out of recyclable materials. Something Sweet is brewing in downtown BG, and the owner is doing it the old-fashioned way. Sheree Burnside joins us now with the story. Sheree? Mike Mullins has 16 different flavors of beer that he keeps in rotation, and eight of them are always on tap. What makes it so sweet is that each one has its own recipe. Live music, beer, and food. This combination creates the perfect atmosphere for new customers at the Sugar Ridge Brewery in downtown Bowling Green. So far, I've really enjoyed my experience here. The environment is very welcoming and the staff seems very friendly. Um, and the drinks are really good. Owner, Mike Mullins, opened the place back in September and is doing pretty well. Business is good on Fridays and Saturdays, most weeks. Uh, through the week, it's very slow. That's something we need to work on. As with any new business, it comes with its ups and downs. It is. It's very challenging. However, his customers are well worth it. It's uh, rewarding at the same time to put out a good to put out a good product and uh, to make people happy. Don't forget you have your tag. Mm -hmm. Owning the restaurant is just half of Miller's responsibility. The other half is right behind this door. This is where he brews five to six barrels of beer mm -hmm. at a time. Yeah. Started as a home brewer. What began as a creative outlet soon blossomed into something more. I read a lot of books, a lot of reading, and then I went to American Brewers Guild uh, a little bit later and finished the education there. With the help of his schooling, Mullins was able to tap into his destiny. Bring the water up to 170 degrees. You mix that with the malt, malted barley, which has been crushed. It still has the hulls intact, so it has a little bit of coarseness to it. That rests for 90 minutes and it turns all the, sh all the starches in this product into sugars, maltose. The process takes a while, but patience pays off. The top seller would be probably the Citrus Fridge IPA, the Falcon. The Falcon sells very well. Those are the two. And a happy customer? Yep, I'd come back. Is the sweetest payoff of them all. If you would like to taste one of Mullen's flavors, they're open Tuesday through Saturday. February is Black History Month. It is being celebrated with panels, discussions, and events honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. Reporter Shalon Stevens was at one of the tributes. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired many African Americans during his time, and his legacy still inspires African Americans today. I'm an intellectual being with Faculty and students gathered for the third annual MLK Spoken Word event to kick off Black History Month. BJSU alum Kayleen Powell returned to BJSU campus to share her poetry. 
to be able to express that to other people and for people to understand my point um, and to be able to get across through my words, it's very exciting. Martin Luther King Jr.'s work was recited by BGSU students. MLK has impacted my life uh, tremendously. Uh, my uh, family came from the South, so having a leader like that and having someone lead the, uh, pave the way is uh, very inspirational, especially when it came to me. Assistant Vice President for Student Career Success, Jeff Jackson, read a letter by MLK when he was in the Birmingham jail. Students also sang, danced, and played instruments. This event allowed MLK's work to be showcased and let African American students perform their talent. For Falcon 5 News, I'm Shalon Stevens. A new musical season is beginning for America's finest singing machine. The BGSU Men's Chorus is preparing for another semester of per performances. Its spring tour covers different cities across the country, and Mimi Miller got a sample of the sounds for this season. Singing choral music and harmonizing tunes is what the BGSU Men's Chorus strives to do. The group has a history of excellence at the university that they take much pride in. Uh, so the men's chorus was uh, created back in the 70s. Um, it's an auditioned all-male ensemble. Uh, uh, music majors and non-music <coughs> majors are welcome. Dr. Richard Schmitke conducts this ensemble and aims to uphold its legacy. Although the group's main focus is music, it's about much more than that. But this is getting so much better. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's it's kind of like a brotherhood outside of you know a fraternity or sorority. And we travel. We go on tours. Um, we do a lot of events on campus as well as off campus. So. Their year primarily consists of preparing for tours, which helps brand the university choir. This year, they are going to the International Men's Chorus Conference in Washington D.C. Along the way, the group will make stops at local churches to sing and are often housed there until heading to their next location. For Falcon 5 News, I'm Mimi Miller. From tragedy to triumph, that's the story of a person, personal trainer who got interested in self-defense. She shared her experiences with Molly Wells. The name Reagan Tokes may sound unfamiliar, but for Whitney Wolf, it holds significance. And then it's weather, right? Um, so this woman from my high school who okay. was a year younger than me. And I'm going to see it because um, I never looked at missing, it. And it turned out that she was abducted and murdered. It happened last year, and the case led Wolf to pursue further self-defense training. She wanted more than a one-day class. She spent the whole summer training one-on-one -on -one with a sergeant from the Maumee Police Department. Wolf says her training the made her gonna think come up everyone on that TV, should have right? the chance to defend themselves. I realized uh, I really needed to spread the word, so I just wanted to teach other people. BGSU student Courtney Brown is a participant in Wolf's self-defense course. She says these lessons have empowered her personally. I come from a family with um, all men, and they don't think much of women being able to fight, so I'd like to prove them wrong. Wolf says the situation that happened to her friend happens equally to men and women. For Brown, these numbers mean more to her professionally. Um, being a journalist, I mean, especially, I think it's getting, well, it always has been a dangerous job depending on where you are, but it's really important to know how to defend yourself. Studying kinesiology brings another dynamic to Wolf's self defense teaching. Um, so I'm definitely pretty good at understanding how somebody moves and what needs to change in movement patterns. Um, that's kind of what I love to learn. And for Wolf, the skills she learns and teaches can help save a life. They also help her remember a life that was lost. For Falcon 5 News, I'm Molly Wells. Precipitation is in the forecast, but not the kind you'd expect this time of year.
Northwest Ohio has received 30 inches of snow so far this season. That's four more inches than average. And as Erin Kelly found out, it meant six school days off and a lot of smiling faces. This morning when I seen my school come across the screen closed, I was like, yeah! Ah, uh, yes. School closings. It's been 10 below zero and Northwest Ohio has had three snowstorms so far this year. There's no wonder we often see kids playing, playing outside instead of studying. Punxsutawney Phil said six more weeks of winter on Groundhog's Day. So that means kids are wearing their clothes inside okay. out and backwards and saying their prayers for those school closings so that they can come here and sled their days away. But that snowy weather is twice the fun for adults. Yeah, I got my first bike when I was three. This is it. This is my first bike. <laughs> Uh, my mom actually is mini bike champion of the world. She is Miss Mini Bike, Teresa Irons. Once Lake Erie freezes, metal studs are put on wheels to help dirt bikes grip the ice better. This way, wheelies and donuts can go on and on and on without slipping. And to others, ice means something a little different. This one here, I constantly, um, I jig with it, right? So you can try to attract the fish. And this one here, again, I've, I've caught one here and one here. Here's the other one that I just literally caught just a few seconds before you walked up. And then I have a big uh, sunfish that I caught earlier. Changes day by day, depends on the if it's overcast, if it's sunny. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a, a little bit of luck as well. Bringing a raw piece of wood into a, a structure, an, an animal, whether it be a bear or a wolf, or what it be, just just taking that piece of wood and turning it into something. Somebody goes, oh wow, look at that. You know, that that that's what I enjoy. Just like children, adults too wait and hope for old man winter to come and bring his blistery weather for them to play in. For Falcon 5 News, I'm Erin Kelly. It's the day after Valentine's Day, so how do you keep that romance strong? When we come back, a Bowling Green couple shares their secrets to life, long love affair. Our Falcon 5 Focus is next. This was a scary moment for Elliot Stabler and everyone at Richard Petty Motorsports. Thankfully, the folks at I don't say anything else after that. Oh. the safety of our drivers. And I hope you do the same thing when you get in your car. The Department of Transportation says that taxi drivers are four times more likely to be in a serious accident. Buckle up, watch the road, and please do not text and drive. It could be the last text you ever sent. Wait, this, this is, is this? brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Behind the wheel, there is no such thing as a small distraction. A public service reminder from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, who would rather help keep your bones strong than put them back together. Speak out against distracted driving at decidetodrive.org. My name is Amanda. I'm 21 years old. I have lots of friends that use tanning beds that lay out in the sun all the time, and I tell them about Jamie. Jamie was in her early 20s when she was diagnosed with melanoma, and she died right before she turned 30. People think tanning is safe. I don't think it's safe. You could die just like Jamie did. This message is brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. Love. Since 
Tonight on Falcon 5 Focus, we're talking about love. Since yesterday was Valentine's Day, a lot of focus is on couples and relationships. And perhaps the best way to find out how to keep a relationship strong is to ask a successful couple. Joining us tonight is Dave and Mary Nepper. Hi, guys. Hi, how's your name? So, um, I want to start with you, Dave. How long have you guys been married? 37 years. Does that sound about right, Mary? Yep, this August will be 38. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so yesterday was Valentine's Day, and you guys celebrated with cards and chocolates and dinner. And so, it's, but after 37 years of Valentine's Day celebrations, um, why is it still an important holiday to you guys? Are you asking him? I'll ask you first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I guess it's important to me because um, Dave is not only my lover, my husband, my spouse, but he's also my best friend, and he still makes my heart beat. What about mm -hmm. you, Dave? Well, it's a day to show your kindness and consideration and compassion, e even though it's been several years. Uh, the, the feelings are still there. That's so great. So, um, how old were you guys when you met? Uh, David was 29 and I was 30. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and your proposal story is a little different than the average proposal story. So, can you tell me about that? Well, um, 37 years ago, I was a waitress in Toledo, and my girlfriend called me on a Friday and said, hey, guess what? I proposed to 10 of my customers today, and I said, what are you talking about? You proposed to your customers? She said, you know, it's Sadie Hawkins Day, leap year, February 29th, the girl asked the guy, and I said, oh, it's Friday, I have a date with Dave, I'll have to ask him to marry me, and she said, no, don't, and I said, why? She said, he might take you up on it. I said, right, I've known the guy two months, and I have six teenagers, I don't think so. And that night, Dave came in, and I said, hey, do you want to get married? And do you remember your answer? Sure. When? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. And yeah. then he uh, didn't respond. So he said, my sister's getting married in August. We can make it a double wedding. And I thought, this guy's nuts. Mm -hmm. And he said, I didn't respond again. And he said, well, my little sister Janie's getting married in December. We can make it a double wedding then. And I just thought, yeah, right, this guy's nuts. And we went out dancing, had a few drinks, came back mm -hmm. to the house, and I made some coffee, and we sat on the couch, and he put his arm around me, and he said, well, dear, did you mean that question you asked me? What did, what, did you mean that? Were you serious? And I said, what question? Because that was like five hours ago. Right. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> and he said, do you know about getting married? And I said, oh, that question. I said, no, why? And he said, because, Mary, I would love to marry you and help raise your six children. Oh, my gosh. And that was 37 years ago. So, Dave, with her having six kids, like, why didn't that run you away? Like, it would run the average guy away. Well, when you're uh, out there looking for a spouse, you know what you, you want and what you don't want. And when I found a, a good woman, uh, I wasn't going to let six kids, you know, interfere and get in the way. I knew someday they'd grow up, leave home, and get married in that order. Didn't exactly work that way, but, you know, that was my plan. <laughs> So, Mary, how did that make you feel to see somebody that interested in you? That they oh, didn't I was shocked. Um, I've always been called motor mouth, and that's probably <laughs> the only time in my life that I couldn't talk. My jaw just hit the ground, <laughs> and I just sat there in shock. And, of course, after he left, I called up my girlfriend and said, <laughs> guess what? He wants to marry me. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting. I, I felt very special, very, I guess because, because he included people kids mm -hmm. you know his answer was I want to help you raise your children oh. and that was just I mean really unbelievable unreal so Dave how did you adjust to your you have one daughter right and mm. she has six children how did you adjust to that type of lifestyle well it was uh, quite quite a lot coming from the country moving into the city and uh, going from only having one child to seven and uh, it, it was a it was a lot of a lot of stress at first, but uh, eventually I learned the routine. <laughs> so how did you guys make it work? With like He was 29 and my oldest was 17. Um, a lot of friction, a lot of chaos, a lot of craziness. I warned, I warned David when we got married, I said, there will never be a dull moment. And I don't believe in that six, seven letter word divorce. You know, I don't <laughs> believe in that word, so you stuck with me. And he said, honey, you told me there would never be a dull moment. 
but you never told me there would be no time to rest. So <laughs> now that we're older, we get a lot of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so some may think that after 37 years, you know, it gets kind of boring. But how do you guys keep your love life fresh? How do you keep it new? Just like your, your relationship. Know. You know, I have a lot of friends that say, oh, I can't wait till my husband's out of the house mm -hmm. so I can get this done and get that done. And um, I, just, I just enjoy being with Dave, whether we're... Um, playing cards or watching a, a movie. He watches Hallmark movies with me <laughs> <laughs> and makes popcorn. <laughs> so I'm just... Um, well, being a, a helpmate is better than being somebody sits on the couch and hollers, hey, bring me yes. another beer. Right. You know, uh, I wash dishes, do shopping, uh, fold clothes, uh, you know, do whatever I can to be a help. And I give him lots of hugs and kisses. Yeah. <laughs> She brings me hot coffee. <laughs> and serving coffee. Yeah. So I know you probably had your, your share of disagreements and things like that within the past 37 years. So how do you manage to work through those without walking away? Wow. Do you know, I honestly can say that Dave has never raised a hand or raised his voice to me. Um, my Valentine card to him, which he hasn't found yet, <laughs> has got a picture of a porcupine on the front, and it says... I love you because you love me even when I'm prickly. And when I get upset and I start yelling and screaming, he'll grab my hands and pray with me. Or um, I don't ever remember him walking away from me. I think I've probably shut down a few times and gotten quiet. But um, as a whole, we just, we just respect each other enough to not, we just, we just enjoy being with each other. So how does it work for you, Dave? Well, when you don't hear something, or you don't understand, or you thought something was said that didn't make any sense at all, you have to go back and ask this person, is this what you said? Is this what you meant? And then you can work things out, because a lot of disagreements come, come from un understandings that were never meant to be. Right. Yeah. So he does do that a lot. What would you say is like the most important element in keeping a marriage alive? Would you say it's like the trust, the commitment? Like what would you say is the glue that holds it together, Mary? Hmm. Can't be one. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's a lot of different things. I think it's being honest with each other, um, being open, not afraid to go to the other and say, honey, I spent too much money at the store today, or um, hmm, gosh, I don't know. And we pray together, we pray together a lot. Um, when I get prickly, he'll grab my hand and pray <laughs> with me. I think that has a lot to do with it. We put the Lord first and, um, and each other. Um, someone said, wow, your husband sure treats you nice, and I would like to think that I, I do the same to him. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a, I've often told people I think marriage is kind of an 80-20 proposition. If I give 80 and expect only 20, and he gives 80 and expects only 20, then we're both going to reap the benefits. So why do you say there's, there can't be just one thing, Dave? Well, first, uh, you, uh, you need to have the, the Lord in your life. And yeah, second of all, all you guys out there, you need to go and learn how to dance a little. Oh, because <laughs> if you're going to go out on a date <laughs> and do nothing but drink, your mind's going to get all foggy. But if you drink twi twice as much as you dance, it's not going to work. But if you dance twice as much as you drink, <laughs> you learn something about the person. And you need to go out there and learn how to give love and receive love from three different sources. One source should be your mother and father. Now, if you come from a dysfunctional family, you don't learn that, so you have to learn it someplace else. Mm -hmm. And you learn that by going out with uh, three different people and talking and learning more. And then when you go to look for a spouse, you know what you want, you know what you don't want. Right. So that you kind of led into my next question, like what advice would you have for someone who's going into marriage, a young couple that's going into marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, Mary, well, what, what advice would you have for the young lady? Okay, um, I guess I would have her stop and think about what she's going into and maybe ask a lot of questions, but also um, have faith and trust and know that, that he loves you so much. He wants to put his life on the line for you. Um, I just, I think that the most important thing that a woman can give a man is respect. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go to my other friends and say, you know, Dave did hate You know, I just, even if he did something that I thought was dumb, I wouldn't go and tell somebody else about it because I respect him too much to do that. And I believe that he feels the same about me. And what, what advice would you have for the young fellow? Well, when you're uh, 
going up to ask somebody out, don't go up and say, hey, you want to go get drunk? Because <laughs> that's going to be disaster. If you ask them, hey, you want to go to a concert and dancing afterwards? You're liable to get a yes. And then the only reason you're going out with that person is to find out enough about them to see if they're worth asking out a second time. Mm -hmm. that, that's your main objective. And then you can uh, ask them out a second time and learn more about them and then go on to the next one and do that and go on and learn how to love and give love from three different sources. So w when you do go out looking for a spouse, you know what you'll stand and what you won't stand for. So what advice would you have for somebody like me who's been married for a year and a half, Mary? Mm. And who wants to like keep it fresh, keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> keep it fresh and keep it going. I don't know. I remember one time going to an engaged encounter and the couple that were sitting up there, I remember wanting to tell them because they were so much younger than we were, I wanted to say, now are you still going to love him when he's got a beer belly and he's sitting on the couch saying, honey, bring me a cup of coffee or bring me whatever, are you still going to care about him? I guess the best advice I can have for you is, is um, be forgiving and try to keep looking at the things that attracted you to him in the first place and overlook the idiosyncrasies because they get better as they get older. I feel I love Dave more today than I did 37 years ago, mm. you know, even though he was skinny and the best dancer in the class. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you? What, what advice would you have for my husband to keep well, it fresh? Well, when to you keep uh, fresh. are... Mm -hmm doing something or getting plans to go somewhere and your, your husband comes up and, and asks you, you know, w would you do this or that with me? Be willing to say no to what you had planned and say yes to what your husband had planned. And uh, then you're, you're putting him first instead of you first. So Mary, after all this time, what is your best, your favorite characteristic about Dave, your favorite thing about him? Mm. That's, again, that's, I would say his honesty, his uh, um, humility. He's a very humble man and very honest, very sincere. I guess that would be my most, and very gentle. He's a very gentle person. And what about you, Dave? What, what's your favorite characteristic of Mary? Not that uh, <laughs> she's, she's always there when I need her. She's someone I can count on. And... Uh, She's kind of predictable in certain areas, so I don't have to worry about what's coming next. I don't get blindsided. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so what, what do you have here, Mary? Oh, I just wanted to show a picture of upside down. <laughs> 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 this is what David and I looked like 37 years ago. <laughs> this is what you we look like. We were both skinny and we had hair <laughs> and teeth and everything. So this is you when you proposed to him. That's me when I proposed to him. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Mm -hmm. And so what and about And this is what he said yes to. Our children, my children were 17, 15, 13, 11, 9 and 6, 7. Six. <laughs> yep. 17 down to 7. Wow. And David had one daughter. Yes. I was widowed 44 years ago when this little guy was in my tummy. My husband had uh, open heart surgery, had a heart attack and died. And I prayed and asked the Lord, someday would he send me a man who would pray with me. And six years late, six years later, I met that man. Mm -hmm. Only he didn't pray and he didn't know the Lord, but he does now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you guys remember your first day? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you remember about mm -hmm. it? <laughs> I don't know if I can say it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> was it too crazy? He scared me. It was crazy. Yeah. We went out dancing and we had a few drinks and he took a cherry and wrapped it in his made a knot in it out of his Oh, without, without using his... Yes. The, the uh, stem. Yeah. <laughs> so he told me he was very talented and I was ready to run. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, this guy is weird. I gotta get out of here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, is there anything else that you guys want to add? Mm. Oh, we, we went dancing in a, a lot of different places yes. in Toledo. We went dancing in Napoleon. Uh, we, we, went, we went out and and danced at uh, several different places because we learned how to dance from the singles group we joined. And uh, that, that helped. Yeah. So you guys only dated for two months, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so you guys did a lot of dancing in those two months. Yes, Actually, we did. Actually, that's how I met Dave, was at a singles party, and I was dancing with a girl, and he walked up and said, oh, come on, we can't have two girls dancing together. And I thought, oh, that's a line if I ever heard one. <laughs> and so he danced with me, and that night, 
he and another guy were leaving, and my girlfriend, the Rhonda, the one that called me about the Sadie Hawkins day, said, oh, that guy, they're leaving. And I said, oh, did you get his number? And she said, no. And I yelled, hey, fellas, where are we going to breakfast? And Dave and the other guy turned around and took us to breakfast. This guy never called my girlfriend, and Dave and I ended up getting married. So is <laughs> that crazy? That's how we met. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining shy. us tonight. <laughs> Join us again next week on Falcon 5 News.